girls and boys and welcome back to the inner sanctum the place where i show you all of my tricks while i pull them off live right in front of you and today as you might have guessed coming from the title of this live stream we're going to be working with horizon mix bus but not only that we're going to be working with parallel mixing techniques because we're going to be applying of course the traditional compression version of this of this uh, technique which is known as the new york style of compression more on that later and also we're going to be working with uh, a little bit of effects we're talking about reverb maybe delay i don't know depends on what i had for breakfast and to be quite frank with you i didn't have any thing and also one more thing what if i tell you that we got somebody behind me creepy looking at me without me even noticing let me introduce you to the Stonian Brave, and it gotta be said from time to time. Beautiful Terry Gargamini. Hello there. Well, hello there, girls and boys. Yeah, I was trying good to, to be back. Good. I'm glad to be here, and it's good to have you here as well. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Harrison Mix Buzz is a, is a very interesting software, and it's always good to learn a little bit, bit more. So, good. let's good. get to it. Look at that, somebody who decided to take a more a longer than expected uh, holiday season. <laughs> it's back. But, yeah, for now, he's gonna be manning the, the post which means that I would be able to interact with him and answer some of your questions because he's going to be the one who's reading your spicy comments, okay? So let him let the world know that, that he is a stunning and brave. I'm from time to time beautiful, okay? So with that being said, let's get into it. Welcome back, girls and boys, to Harrison Mix Bus, this incredible software that Asiago uh, in, uh, tried to introduce to you. It's a really interesting approach to uh, digitalized workstations. Because this guy is mimicking the entire workflow of a Harrison Mix Bus console, including the Mix Buses themselves, we got over here. So let me press play. And one thing before we analyze the mix that we got so far over here in this region, we got something quite amusing, which is uh, the Essence, Mixer Essence, which stands for basically speaking, every time that I click on any of these numbers, look at what happens. All of my mix. Uh, and all of my faders, including plugin, not plugins, but uh, equalizer position and stuff, changes. Why? Because we are saving each of those moments in which we created something new on our mix, which it's going to allow us to have a reference point. And everything is ordered uh, in chronological fashion. That's up to me, okay? This is the workflow that I developed for this thing because this is a great addition. And uh, it's, uh, I won't be using it right now, but just for you to know, okay? So here we go, from the top. What do you think about the mix so far, Tiago? Sounds good to me. I think there's, I but, but even, even though it still has plenty to be worked on, I feel that there are some elements that are not necessarily um, lackluster, but maybe not cutting through enough mm -hmm. quite yet. Um, and I, I feel that with the nature of the track, there's still quite a lot of punch that can still be added. So yeah, let's see where this this takes us. Yeah, because from my perspective, there is a little bit way too much low end still build up but m closer to the mid-range frequency so i got two options and i've been thinking about it while we were uh, running the track over here on the mix bus area i might uh, feel the need of removing and um, not removing but lowering the gain that i added to the kick and the bass the summing bus for deuce let me see if that makes a change I'm gonna go straight to the drum section. This is the timeline for those of you who are getting into Mixbus or is the first time that you see this, this kind of software. 
and actually I can move around. This is actually the entirety of the of the track, but without the, the need of me going back to the traditional edit window, okay? This is much more closer to what you have seen everywhere else. But the trick and the charm uh, of Mixed Boss is that most of the time we're going to be working here. So let's take a look. I'm going to just turn, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to press play, sorry about that, and I'm going to be turning on and off the equalizer, the one that is affecting both kick and bass. Yeah, it's a little bit too heavy. I like what it's doing, but it's way too much. And just for the lulls, let's see if by cutting some of the mid gain on both EQ, uh, 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 kick drum and bass, we can trim down that fat. Nice, don't you think? Yeah, they became a little bit more focused. I like it. Yes, exactly. And it's less uh, cluttered in a way. Good. That's good to know because I was already thinking that we might have to go back to the equalizer, but we shouldn't and we didn't. Good. Now, coming back to, to this area, girls and boys, we're going to be working on the sands because, as I said in the introduction of the video, we're going to be working mostly on the use of parallel mixing techniques. Uh, for those of you who don't know, and this is going to be important, so I'm going to go bigger. Parallel mixing stands for, you're going to have your signal, okay? The non-affected signal. And we're going to send a copy of it to a different boss. A boss is a track, okay? And in there we're going to have a gigantic amount of uh, compression or the fully wet uh, delay or reverb. And we're going to bring that sound into the rest of the mix little by little having this uh, interaction between the, wet, the the dry signal, which is the one that has nothing at all, with the fully affected, affected signal and coming up with something that it's the sum of both. Does that make sense? Yes. It does. And why is that better or what kind of benefits do we, do we get out of this rather than just inserting the compressor on our kick? Here's the thing. We are going to be, for example, let's say that we want to create a thicker or much more attack-driven sounding kick. If we go berserk on the uh, on the sound of the kick drum, we might uh, remove some of the elements that are already working. But if we just work on the kick drum on a different boss or on a different track, and we develop the sound that we want, there, for example, we just work on the attack on the kick on the parallel mixing bus. We blend them together and we get the best of both worlds. And the best part, we can add them to taste without messing around with the original sound. Good, right? Yeah. And the best part, you can actually send something else into the same process or the, into the same signal chain and you can actually apply the effect that you did on the snare, for example, let's say reverb, to the hi-hats, which is way better than just inserting a plugin, a reverb plugin per uh, channel, because that way you can create and convey the motion of the drum kit being together, being played by a drummer inside of a set space. Yep, and that's cool because in the end, e even if you are just a casual listener and you're not gonna notice that, mm -hmm. okay, it sounds like the snare in a room and the crash is in another. Yep. Nobody's gonna notice that, but you do feel yes. that something is off. Exactly. So it's super important in the end. And it gives you a measure of control that is just great for for someone that's working on the track to be able to have this measure of control over what's doing. Yes, look at that. Somebody has been doing uh, his homework. Good, well done. Okay, so how to do it? Over here uh, on my Mixbus uh, send uh, template, which by the way, you can download for free. We are going to add the download link once the, the live stream is over. Uh, pin comment. So we got several uh, sends already uh, ready for ready to rock. And uh, if you want to know more how this works, there is a video in which I explain exactly how this setup works. I will add it as well. Uh, later on once the, the live stream is over so for the time being bear with me 
we're gonna turn on the nasty comp on our snare and probably our overheads from here the nasty comp is on this area this is the mix bosses the stereo boss section let me find nasty comp there it is in all its nastiness and as you can see what makes this guy interesting is that i got a ridiculous amount of gain saturation already set to the top and i got a stupid amount of compression set to over to to uh, obliterate and also you may be able to notice that the fader is all the way down why because as soon as i start to play the track i'm gonna be bringing up this guy little little look at that smoothly as a certain criminals and we're gonna go all the way until we reach a much pleasant sound on the snare and the hi-hats what are we trying to bring with this a little bit of uh, sis uh, the the sizzle and the sound for a lack of a better term if you got a better way to describe it please feel free to make fun of me here we go <laughs> Nice, right? The thing is this, I am getting attack out of this, but if I push it too hard and I get more attack on my snare, my main complaint and my, and my main issue is that my uh, there is a, a buildup of low end energy. So that's why I didn't go that far. I'm gonna solo the drums together and for the record, this is the group, okay? If you click on it, you turn on the groups, the group. Uh, if you turn it off, you turn it off. Okay? Makes sense. Obviously. So I'm going to turn it on. That means that I can control the entirety of the of the group just by clicking on one of them and everything is going to be and everyone is going to follow the same order. I'm going to solo the drums and we're going to bring up the snare, but I'm going to apply an EQ over here and we're going to lower the low end energy quite a lot. Because what I want and what I liked out of the the comp the, the nasty comp is that we are getting a much pronounced attack on the snare and also a little bit of the k k which is great so i'm gonna press play again and we're gonna bring it up little by little Could you tell the difference? Yeah, there was in the snare. I felt like it became a little bit dirtier, but a, a good kind of dirty. No? Yes, uh, it added some some shine to it. Shine and attack. You could see that it was cutting through the mix even even better. Of course, we're dealing with just the uh, drums. Let's remove the solo buttons and let's see if it works without first. And then I'm gonna bring it in. He bring it in. Here we go. Look, I love what it's doing on the snare, and I like what it's doing on the hi hat, on the overheads. The thing is that we're getting way too much hi hats once we hit the right section. So I'm gonna go over here to my sends, and I'm gonna lower the amount of information being sent from my hi hats to the nasty comp. Why? That way, uh, we can measure how much of the effect is gonna be uh, added to that particular sound. Remember one thing, Rosen boys. We are summing the sound of the high of the overheads and the snare together and creating this nasty comp. This is gonna affect the sound of the snare slightly, but not that much because the issue is only happening when we get to the point on which we get the right 
by lowering the volume or yeah the gain or the amount of sand on the from the overheads to the comp the compressor we are going to just affect that particular part without actually messing around with the snare that much let me show you here we go What do you think? I like it because in the end you got the 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 right to still sound cutting and pristine, and the snare is still getting that added kind of hump, the, yes. that added dirt that sounds nice. Good, exactly. Now we're gonna keep adding more uh, parallel mixing to our drums because now we're gonna be working with the compressor that he, I created for the drums. I'm gonna turn it on on everything, and I might lower the amount of compression or the amount of synth coming from the the kick drum because the kick drum is going to be triggering the compressor quite uh, uh, quite strongly because uh, it's a really prominent sound and it's extremely powerful but i still want to create this compressed version of the com of the of the drums because we're going to make it much uh, powerful sounding okay how are we going to do that I'm going to, once again, solo, so you can have an idea of what we're doing. Solo the drums, just drums. And then I'm going to now move over here. And you got this guy, kind of cyan. Probably that's the proper color. That's the name, the name of the color. And this is comp drums, OK? I'm going to first give it a spin. We're going to be dealing with this guy. I'm going to turn it on. And we're going to set it to which one to use. I might go for leveler. Because I'm gonna try to comp to compress the attack, I'm gonna make the attack a little bit faster. That way we can uh, capture some of the uh, transients, and we're gonna make a much squashed and controlled uh, drum sound that we're gonna add in with the rest of the sound. You'll see what I mean. So let's go a little bit faster, and we're gonna go truly, 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 truly bad on it. Here we go, all the way down. And we're gonna start to bring it in. Here we go. Could you tell the difference? Yeah, it feels way more full bodied. Full body. And look, I just did it out of a guesstimate. Okay? That's the power of this kind of technique. Now, I'm going to go a little bit more nitty gritty because uh, now that I showed you the principle, I'm going to bring back the rest of the mix and let's address it a little bit more. To my taste, I think that the, the, the speed, it's not that terrible. I will try to make it a little bit faster so we capture even more of the transient. And we're going to bring in uh, the sound of the, of the drum kit, the compressed drum kit, little by little, and you can see that the whole point of this is, as Tiago mentioned, is to make the sound of the drums a little bit more fully bodied, if that makes sense, because I think it's quite robust after the compression, uh, because there is something happening and it's thickening up because we're adding an extra layer of sound to, this, to the drums, but it's so compressed and it's so over the top that by bringing it in, we enhance and create a beefier sounding kit. Here we go. What do you think? I think it feels like it's hitting harder. Yeah. It hits you, the, you feel the, the pressure, like the, the kick and the snare especially, you feel the, the, push. the kick, the push, yeah. The push, yeah. And it it emulates a little bit better the, the, the effect of actually seeing music live because you get that, that, that exactly. kind of... Exactly. You feel, you feel it, basically. You feel Thank it. you. You're taking us to what I was trying to explain. The whole point of this technique, Girls and Boys, is to bring in that energy 
because compressors, if used correctly, can create and add an extra layer of energy, or perceived energy, to any sound. For example, uh, the sound of John Bohan's drum, drums on many Led Zeppelin albums is coming from the overuse of a particular compressor, which is 1176, which is used uh, uh, in the terminology by uh, well, using the lingo from this, from the mixing uh, community, is said to Dr. Pepper's mode, which is all in, crushing everything and mixing it to text. And we're doing something like that. What you do with that is you create that kind of sound that makes this drum sound punchier, lively, and they have this pushy element, which is uh, the closest thing that we can do to create that excitement that comes from watching the drummer perform live in front of you. And then I tell you, when it comes to production, the, the only way that you can make a technique like that work is by doing it parallel, yeah? Yeah. Because if, if you go full on with that, it's going to be a mess. Yeah, yeah. If Let me see if I can uh, I, I can show you this. That's the, that's the sound of the of the compressed drums. Let me show it one second to you. You saw it? Yeah, it's, way too much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm not going berserk still. Because if I want it, I can increase the, gain, the the trim so I can feed in even more or increase the synth information from here and make it even uh, way more extreme. Let's do it just for the sake of conversation. I'm going to just uh, gratuitously nyaka nyaka, nyaka nyaka. Ugh. I'm going to keep the keep the ah, damn it. <laughs> here we go. I'm going to solo the, the compressed version. Mm. Does that sound... Kind of, that does, doesn't it sound a little bit closer to Led Zeppelin? Yeah, a it has bit. that little that vibe. Let's see if it works with the, the track. I'm going to lower it once again and let's push it. It worked, <laughs> but I think we got way too much uh, a kick drum. We were getting that uh, build up on the low end. I kind of like the rest. Let's see. Could you hear the pumpy effect? When, uh, when the thumb kicked yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the thumb uh, triggered the compressor way too hard. So let me see if by lowering the the thumbs a little bit we get we we stop the compressor from squashing the mix. Let's see. No, it won't work. Let me see. Let me explain why. We got high transient uh, elements uh, that comprises the sound of the kick of the kit. Whenever the crash hits, even though it's not extremely loud, the transient it's quite prominent. And that is triggering the compressor to go full on, and that makes that pumpy effect. Most of the time it works, but whenever those extremely transient driven elements pop in, the compressor is going to squash them up. We got two options, because I like what it's doing. I can lower the amount of information being sent by the overheads, which is something that I'm going to try right now. I'm going to bring it back to what it was before we went berserk, and I might uh, lower the trim. Because we're using the trim as the input knob of on our compressor. We're feeding it with even more information. Let's see if it works. And if it doesn't, we can increase it once again and lower the threshold, letting the compressor know that until we reach a certain level, you compress. The thing is this. What it's doing right now, it's bringing up, by being so compressed, the ambience, which is what it's adding this energy. And if I start to mess around with the threshold, we might lose that element. Okay, so this is something that you have to always... It, there is always compromises with every choice that we do in, we, we make in life. How profound is that? That was deep. I know. Beautiful. So, let's see.
I think it's working. And in the end, it didn't even have to compromise much. Not that much. Yeah. Because what I did was I lowered the sent information uh, on the problematic uh, elements. Uh, in this case, were the thumbs and the overheads. Because the crash, whenever it hit, it was quite, quite strong. And the thumbs, they are transient driven by nature. So it's obvious that they were triggering the compressor way too hard. The rest, it's good. I like what it's doing. And the snare is nice, but I feel that my snare is starting to sound a little bit overly compressed. Mm. So I'm going to lower the amount of compression being applied, being, uh, not the amount of, of compression, the amount of sent information being sent to my uh, drums. Because we also have the compressor that we're going to be using on my snare for that particular reason. Let's see. <laughs> Pretty good, don't you think? Yeah, like it. And look, if you say that oh, it's just better because it got louder, of course it's getting louder. We are getting a copy of the sum of the drums, but it's not just a mere copy. It's an overly compressed, super vibing, extremely colorful version of the drums that we're adding little by little to taste. The reason why you do it while you are listening to the entirety of the mix, it's because that way you know when to stop pushing it further. You get me, right? Because the whole point is to is to just add that little genius equal element that comes from this uh, from the excitement. Okay? And of course it's a little bit louder for obvious reasons, but it's still within the gain stage that we set previously. Okay? It's not louder, it's just more vibing. Although it's a little bit louder if you go that uh, nitty gritty or picky. Got it? Yeah. Good. Now I'm going to work now with my snare. I'm going to turn on the compressor, the send on the compressor, but obviously we have to turn off the, the, the group because I just want to send my snare sound to my compressor that it's working on my snare. Let's see. We're going to work with this uh, uh, circuit, the compressor, which allows us to control the ratio and the speed as well. So here we go. I'm going to send the snare probably a little bit more than I should because I want to compress it to oblivion and I'm going to, you know what, mm, I'm going to level limiter, yeah exactly, this is what I wanted, I want to increase the release tail, I'm going to make it slower, why and what are we going to get out of this, we're going to increase the, the release tail, we're going to add a little bit of Okay, we're gonna make the, the sound of the snare to to survive longer after being hit. You'll see. Here we go. Lowering, lowering, lowering without any form of uh, care. Lowering the fader all the way down. And I'm gonna solo both the snare, and, the snare and the compressed version just for you to know. you see what the parallel compression did or was doing on the snare? Yeah, and actually when you first brought it up that you went a little bit too hard on it, it felt like the snare became a little bit too open. Yes. And then you started to find the sweet spot and it became, went back to being focused, but with with the more punch. More punch. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm still not convinced yet. Why? 
because I think that my release is a little bit too, too slow and also my threshold is way too high because using the meter you 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 get a, a visual feed of what's going on and the issue was that we were compressing way too much and at certain points we were compressing to the point of just obliterating the sound which were, was creating this like extra distortion or distorted elements to the sound of the snare which sometimes works and sometimes it's even a sound okay mm. and you have heard that in plenty great records for example the first one that comes to my mind is it's uh, acdc their their snares have this uh, kind of vibe element which it's a good and great sound the thing is that in here is not cutting it because it was way too dirty mm -hmm. let's see if by making the compression a little bit less aggressive we can get a better result here we go I'm going to bring it on little by little. Got it. Got it. Did you get the whole point? Yeah. No, we we're finding this a sweet spot in between not making it super, super squashed. Mm -hmm. And adding that extra element that was... First, it, fe feel, it starts to feel a little bit fake. Yes. And so we're keeping it realistic, but adding the, the that extra magic that can only come from actually doing something with the sound. <laughs> yes, so exactly. So it, it was cool. Yeah, I like it. So, from here onwards, I am tempted on hitting my guitars or uh, apply reverb. And I think reverb is the next step. Here we go. We're going to turn on the whole set. And at this point, you should be familiar with this, okay? I'm not going to explain it to you. Hold on basically everything that is not the, the, the kick and plate as well on everything that is not the kick. Why? Because it would be kind of boomy. For real. You will add more low-end energy that would just cloud the rest of the mix. We might add a little bit of both of those reverbs, but a tiny bit, because usually you get some bleeding from the kick drum uh, into the rest of the microphones recording a, 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 a drum kit. The only thing is that in this case we're dealing with a uh, robot this is a drum machine this is actually logic pro's drummer so it doesn't have that uh, bleeding element everything is so uh, it's basically samples so we don't have the bleeding and we're, we might and i think we will later uh, need to apply a little bit of that reverb to make and convey the, convey the sense of the drum kit being played by someone in a given a space so speaking of which we're gonna begin we're gonna go over here now and we got here our hole and plate reverb. Everything is set and ready to rock. I'm going to lower the the faders all the way down because I'm going to bring them on little by little because there are two methods of uh, on which you can apply this, this uh, reverb. You can keep it up all the way up and send it uh, controlling the, the sense, which is the traditional method. But since right now I am feeling a little bit uh, daring, I'm going to do it the other way around. I'm going to first send everything as it is, find the sweet spot for the volume, and then lower everything back, and then I'm going to bring it up uh, to taste. Why? Just cause. Okay. <laughs> now, it's also because I want, to, I want to show you how this thing operates. I usually would do it without having to lower the fader, but it's something that it's, it's just for educational uh, reasons. Okay? We're going to bring in the first of the two plugins that are not mixed bus we're gonna add two delay well we might need a delay and also we're gonna be adding uh, two reverb units okay so the first one let's find reverb you know what i've been quite into ssl since forever so i feel like using ssl 
So, believe it or not, SSL developed a great, great, um, what's the name of that guy? Reverb, but let me find it. Because those guys have done some, it's Flexverb, that's the name. Here it is, in all its glory. And we're going to use the audio unit version, because why not? And hopefully it won't crash. <laughs> it didn't. Good. So as you can see here, there's some boys, this um, uh, kind of complex looking uh, reverb, which now that I think about it, it's going to be kind of uh, redundant because it comes with its own compressor. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be using uh, the, the channel strip, which comes with that compressor. So I might uh, disregard that section. So I'm, I'm going to be, and also it comes with a, a equalizer. So yeah, yeah, you can see, you can see the redundancy. But we're going to be using it because of this area. This is a great, great reverb circuit, which allows you to control uh, the release tail and the early reflections independently using two different algorithms. And cool. And the first thing that we got to do since we're dealing with parallel compression, just make goddamn sure that everything is set to all the way up in the wet, dry uh, knob. Otherwise, we're going to be doing parallel mixing on top of parallel mixing, okay? Because we're going to be having a mix between the dry signal plus the, the wet signal plus the actual dry signal plus the boss. Yeah. Messy. So always do this. Because if you're ego light, as I know that you are, you are already saying, dude, this knob is basically parallel mixing uh, inside of a plugin. It is. Why I didn't do that before? And why should I do it the way that you are uh, trying to teach me to do it? Because that way, this way, you will have to insert an instance of the plugin per channel. Mm. And DSP is important, even though we're running a stupidly powerful computers, it's still a hindrance. Secondly, you won't be able to share the same parameters with the rest of the instruments, because this is going to help us to create and convey the motion of a place, of, a, of an actual space. And if you have one of uh, a reverb differently set uh, per channel, you know where we're heading. Mm -hmm. And it's easier just to have one cent, as easy as that. So wet. When would you use that? This is there, and it's a great uh, application when you are writing music and creating the sounds for the track. This is an awesome way to develop and create and sound stage and sound design. Okay, this is for sound design purposes mostly. You can use it on mixes, and I have done it in front of you. But usually, we do it this way. Good. Let's see what we got. Really, really uh, humble. Nothing stupidly gigantic. Let's play around with it. I'm going to increase the reverb time just for you to see the sound of the reverb in action. There it is. OK? And just for the record, I'm just I'm I'm gonna solo the drums because those are the only ones that are affected by the reverb for now. Coming back to reverb, there it is. I'm gonna lower the reverb tail, the reverb time, probably uh, the diffusion increase, and the pre delay pre delay thirty milliseconds might be good. Why? Because mathematically speaking, whatever. <laughs> Great explanation. Yeah, no, no. Mathematically <laughs> speaking, uh, 30 milliseconds is what usually takes for a given sound to come back to our ears once it's reflected okay. on a size of certain proportions. A room, not a room, uh, a hole, because we're trying, we're creating a hole. Okay, let's see if it works. And what those pre delay means? It's gonna hit and it's gonna wait 30 milliseconds before the reverb kicks in. Simple as that. That's it. Right. Nice, don't you think? Yeah, cool. It's adding vibe. We're not trying to create that oh, feel calling sound yet. We might. The thing is that since we're applying this reverb to everything, the diffusion, it's spreading the sound a little bit more and making it less clearer. And because that way we can let the dry signal do the talking while the, the reverb just is there looking pretty. 
That makes sense because it's the whole composition. So I'm going to apply a little bit of modulation to it, to the reverb. Why? Because flare and vibe. What is modulation? It's just going to make an undulate. Uh, 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 yeah, um, it's going to just modulate in my chorus. Okay, it's going to uh, put the reverb out of tune. For real, that's what it's going to do. But it's going to do it in such a way that it's so subtle that it's going to add more vibe and more interest to the sound of our whole reverb. Let's see. That might work, because what I did here, I decided to uh, blend or use or rely more heavily on the tail end of our circuit, which is right now running a room. But uh, let me see. I'm going to select here hole, and this is going to change completely the circuit itself. And let's see if by in, uh, working more, more uh, focusing more on the sound of the tail, we get a much extended sound without turning this into a cavern. Here we go. Nice. What was I thinking? Perfect. Yeah. Why did that happen? Because this is a much more uh, uh, bigger or, yeah, for a lack of a better term, sound. We're going to set it to small and look what happens. Let's do. Of course. That final section was better, but we're getting way too much low end. So let's do the old in and out and cut the living stuff out of the low end of the reverb. There it is. And now let's bring in the rest of the mix and we're gonna add the reverb little by little. Here we go. What do you think? Well, I think it, it became a lot more interesting. Even though you, you, you mentioned that you're not trying to, to make the, the sound more punchy, it did make it a little bit more, well, fuller. It became fuller. A little balls bit. here, balls yeah, here. Yeah, balls here. But it became more interesting. It, it came from a nice but fairly stale sound to a nice and interesting sound. Mm hmm, exactly. Now, I am kind of uh, tempted to uh, push the blend probably, let's see, at the very center, okay, 50-50, something like that. Early reflections and tail, because even though we, I like the, the the extended tail that we were getting out of this, to be frank, it was way too in the nose, and for this kind of music, wouldn't work necessarily speaking, because it remind me of Pink Floyd, but late Pink Floyd. We're talking about a momentary lapse of reason uh, kind of sound. Division Bell kind of. Division Bell, you get me. This uh, airy, vibey, kind of geriatric sound in Pink Floyd, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Huge Pink Floyd fan, by the way, don't kill me. But you get the vibe. You get what I'm trying to say. So, uh, I, I think that uh, uh, creating a little bit more, uh, a shorter tail by focusing mostly on the early reflections, which is the shorter variant of the, of the reverb circuit, will get a much more appropriate sound. Let's see. And we did. Look. Yeah. Worked. Nailed. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the reverb, uh, at least the plugin window, 
And this is where we're going to begin to mess around and, and destroy the entirety of, the, of this. I'm going to set the reverb to be full on, the fader all the way up, and we're going to lower the sense of everything all the way down. Look at that. Because now we're going to be adding them to taste one by one in the context of the mix. Because it's ridiculous to apply this when it's only the drums. Here we go. Beginning with the snare and from the and the snare onwards. Here we go. I like it. Why is this so important, girls and boys? You are mixing the reverb. Let me rephrase it. You have to look at this kind of uh, parallel effects as if you were dealing with a new mix inside of the mix. Why? You saw that I once I got the sound of my reverb to a point on which I liked it, I started to mix in the elements inside of the reverb circuit so I can get the balance, the right balance between the amounts of uh, snare, hi-hats, thumbs, and overheads to the point on which they made sense within the reverb circuit. And then, since I, know, I, I was already aware of what kind of sound was coming out of my reverb, I was already ready to expect a certain result by sending certain amounts of each of the individual elements that I wanted to send to the river. Does that make sense? Yep. Good. Now, I'm going to work on the guitars as well, but uh, I want to go back and rewind because we still have to apply the plate river, mm. which is a completely different sound. And we're going to use that plate to create the sense of depth. Because the hole is creating this kind of wider, uh, higher sounding, like a little bit of a. We're putting a ceiling to the to the room. To the room. Now we're gonna put the dimensions of the walls. Okay, the distance between the the, the drummer and the walls. But I have a question. Go. Because the the reverbs, the different reverbs that you're applying, they sum in the end. Yes. So when you're applying the the reverb, the first one, for instance. Mm. Would you already take into consideration that there are other layers of reverb to be applied afterwards? Of so course. So that you don't go too hard on the first one? Of course. Okay. Of course. Because I am I I am using that reverb in particular for a specific application. As I said, we're getting we're putting the, the, the ceiling on top of our we're putting the roof of our house, okay? Because remember, the whole point of reverb is to convey the motion and give the sensation of an a, a fictional space. And uh, we are dealing in a 3D, three-dimensional world, allegedly, and we got the sides, the top, the bottom, and the and behind, the depth. Depth. Thank you. And I am using one reverb to create the, to create the height and the, the, the sense of verticality, and now we're going to get the horizontality and the depth by the use of the second one. Okay. That's why you have to be conscious on which reverb you're, you're going to use. Because even though you might have one river that sounds amazing, let's say round by native instruments, which simply works, 
It, I wouldn't use it in this application. It's way too in your head, in your face. It's, n it's musical. It's designed to be used as a, as a sound uh, sound creation tech, uh, tool rather than a sound design tool rather than a, a mix, a mixing tool. Mm -hmm. In contrast, flex, flex verb, it's, you saw how effective it was yeah. because it's totally designed to be used in this application. So we're about to finish, girls and boys. So I'm going to end up this by working on the plate. Double click and let's find a proper plate reverb. And you know that I'm going to be using, if you've been following this channel for a while, I love the sound of Little Plate by this little known company called Sound Toys. Great, great goddamn company. Hopefully, yeah, it didn't crash. <laughs> That's why I love it. They never crash. <laughs> and again, you can use it. Uh, you, you have a blend knob here, but we don't do that here. Then low cut, please. Thank you. Why? Because I don't want to add rumble. Then... We got the mod. It's basically what we did on the other one. Would I, would I use it? I don't know. Let's turn it off for now. And this is the decay. Simple. Okay. So let's see what we got. Now that you understood how the whole concept works, I'm going to lower the send of my uh, of the elements that I'm going to be sending to the plate. And I'm going to add them to taste little by little. And hopefully the plate, I'm going to set it somewhere here. Why I am choosing this so arbitrarily? Because I know what to expect. I've been using this plate for years, so I know how it will it behaves most of the time. So here we go. Okay, it already sounds better. <laughs> There's an air. Don't doesn't, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds like it's hitting with with a with a vengeance now. Yes, and it's fatter. <laughs> yeah, because the snare, the snare, well, the reverb, it's actually adding that a little bit of air that was missing, especially because we're dealing with a with a really properly recorded sample, but it's still a sample, and they are boring by nature because we know that it's a robot. So I am quite quite sure that I'm gonna be working with my low cut even further, and I play, I'm gonna play the mod because it's gonna add vibe. It's just sound. Here we go. Beautiful. Could you hear the, the the decay, the release tail? Yeah. Really nice, right? Yeah, and I like. Well, even though you, I I don't think you went too hard, I couldn't see exactly in the fader, but on, on the kick, but uh, it became a little bit rounder. It's because we're adding a little bit more of a uh, low end, or because I didn't do anything on the kick. Mm. The kick is is unaffected by the reverb. Okay. But where we felt like that, and I know what you mean, because we are adding a little bit. Uh, we're adding that layer of glue. That comes from the mm. the the reverb, the combination of the reverbs and crea the, the creation of that space. It's becoming exciting. Mm -hmm. That's and that's why you got the impression that the kick drum was pu punching harder. It's because everything is becoming more musical now. It makes sense. Okay. Cool. Especially because we're de we're dealing with a robot, mm -hmm. and they are devoid of emotions, unlike uh, iRobot, for example. <laughs> that was terrible. But <laughs> okay, but you get it. You get it. Sorry. <laughs> So <laughs> I'm trying to make this entertaining. Okay, so <laughs> that was terrible. Okay, we can even do something even crazier. We can apply distortion to the reverb. Yeah. Would that bring any form of benefit? Let's see. It did. It actually worked. It works somehow. It's yeah. Yeah. It's colorful. 
it's colorful exactly because that's the whole point of uh, of overdrive we are adding texture and we're adding harmonic content and harmonic content it's what our ears or human ears uh, perceives to be musical the harder we push an analog system such as the stuff that we got i got behind me you can see it sorry uh, the harder you push it the more harmonic distortion it's created and there is a sweet spot on which it actually adds color and texture and vibe and makes the sound better but there is also another point on which you cross the rubicon and now everything is being distorted into oblivion and you can hear sh stuff okay <laughs> so <laughs> yeah that was, <laughs> so <laughs> that's why distortion is actually useful and there are some reverbs for example give me a second I'm going fancy in. yes there is this is this box is uh, a space by eventide and it's full of dust sorry about that girls and boys but uh, this guy it's a reverb unit that comes with several algorithms algorithms and one of them it's called mangle verb verb and as you might have guessed it mangles the sound of your reverb because it's full of distortion and it's great because the distortion is applied to the reverb not to the source so you distort the living stuff out in a way for example so, such as the one that i did here or uh, to extremes which it's a sound and it's something that is extremely cinematic we'll show you something like that later on in the, in the channel because this is a fantastic box Every, everybody should have one or three at least okay and if you can't get it sorry <laughs> no you should get one okay <laughs> and also there is a, a plugin version i think of mangle verb i think they have one and there are several of these algorithms uh, that you can use on your digital organization for a fair price now that we got to this point girls and boys i'm gonna save my uh store my new mix this is gonna be p drums mix and bear and now that we saved it see what happens if i go to drums ba bam something changed if i go to p drums it comes back it comes back to what we ended up with so far so i'm gonna go from the start and i will be switching around just for the lulls because you'll see how different it is and this is extremely useful because if there is something that i like better on the previous version i can just recall it here we go <laughs> What do you think? Okay, I quite like it. I think that the difference from the starting point of today was quite dramatic because you brought the drums to life. Yes. Because the drums were, weren't bad by any means, as you put it, that it's a well recorded drum. Uh, well, machine. <laughs> yeah. But the, um, it was kind of lifeless. Yeah, it, it was, was kinda, lifeless. I wouldn't go as far as call it boring, but it was stale. Yeah. And now you did all the, the, the fun stuff to it, and it, it is now a, a natural drum that could be heard in a in something that is just not uh, recorded but uh, an album or a yeah it's yeah. convincing enough now it is it, because that was the main intention uh, behind the whole operation today trying to add life to a lifeless performance and look this is applied to a robot okay but in my experience and not trying to name any names but i have dealt with drummers that were lifeless as well <laughs> and uh, adding vibe through the use of distortion and and, and coloration and modulation as well 
you can bring back most of what was missing uh, from a uh, non-K performance. If you are dealing with terribly recorded or poorly performed uh, recording, there is a point in which it's better to just call the guy, tell how much you hate him, and bring him back uh, to the recording studio to do, to do the takes again. Or even better, just hire a new drummer. But that's not a story that it's not part of this conversation. Okay, girls and boys, there is something else that I would like to do, but I will see it on this one because I want to show you that I wanna I will show you that next week, which is I will readdress my stereo bus because I realized that at certain points my snare was rim shutting the living stuff out of the of the of the snare and it was triggering my master compressor way too hard. Mm. The rest of the mix is fantastic, but I could tell that when we reached that uh, heavier heating section, the snare was kind of squashy. So we will address that next week because we might get into the dark realm of the dark arts, also known as automation, which I hate, especially in next month. But wherever, that's what we have to do. So stay tuned because we'll meet you next week. And before we go, this is your first time channel. I welcome you and I encourage you to join and subscribe to this channel because we do this, we do this kind of broadcast every week. And also, if you'd like to support the channel as well, the best way to do it is by listening to our music on Apple Music or Spotify. And also by following us on social media such as Instagram because that's the best way for you to get in touch with us in a much more personal basis, allegedly. <laughs> as every single time that I meet you, girls and boys, I gotta remind you something. Never, ever, ever let anybody tell you what to dream about. And remember that we will see you when we see you.